We begin in Toronto, where Prime Minister Justin Trudeau hosted Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Schmiel and announced that Canada will send more firearms and bullets to Kyiv. Everywhere around the world, there are authoritarian dictators looking at Vladimir Putin, curious to see if he will succeed. That's why Canada stands unequivocally with Ukraine. We are not exhausted. We are not fatigued. And support of our partners, support of government of Canada, Prime Minister, his team, is fulfilled us by this feeling and uh, we are sure that we will win this war altogether. The Ukrainian Prime Minister's visit to Canada comes at a pivotal moment in the war. Leaked U.S. intelligence suggests the Ukrainian armed forces are running out of air defense munitions. Some of the documents reportedly suggest Ukraine's stockpiles could be fully depleted in a matter of weeks. Here to discuss this is Minister of National Defense, Anita Anand. Minister, thanks for joining us. Hi, David. Great to be here with you. I'd like to start, if I could, Minister, with the leaked U.S. intelligence that suggests Ukraine's air defense capabilities are in quite a bit of trouble. I, I wonder what the status is of the NASAM air defense system your government has promised Ukraine. Will that be there in time? We are doing whatever is possible to get it there as soon as possible. And in fact, it's being shipped in uh, various tranches uh, because, of course, uh, we are sending other supplies as well. Uh, so it is en route. Okay, it is en route. Because so we'll, the, the, the intelligence is reporting that um, the leaked intelligence is suggesting they could be in real trouble by early May. Will the NASAM be in Ukraine by early May, do you think, Minister? Well, if I could just comment uh, on the alleged leaks, uh, we will continue to do whatever is necessary with our Five Eyes allies to maintain the integrity of the support that we are offering to Ukraine in the short and the long term. Indeed, the alliances are extremely strong and uh, the infrastructure that we are working to protect is also in very good shape. Right, but, but I guess uh, I, I know you don't want to give a specific date on sensitive equipment and when it will arrive, but when you say it is en route, are, are we looking at something that will be there this spring? Are we talking summer? I, I mean, can you ballpark it a little bit more for me on when this critical piece of air defense could be in Ukraine? Let me point to the conversation that we had with Prime Minister Shmihal today. And that was thanking Canada not only for committing aid, but for making sure that our aid arrives. One example I can point to is the Leopard 2A4 battle tanks, all of which have almost arrived. The last tanks are en route as we speak. They are in Poland. We are training on them. We have provided ammunition and spare parts. That's what Canada is known for. So our government is working extremely hard to get all of the aid that we have committed there as soon as possible in light of the timing circumstances that you have just outlined in your question. Okay, I, I wonder, Minister, is there another way Canada can help? Can, can, can you procure and provide the munitions for the existing systems, the Soviet area systems that they're relying on? Is that something Canada can do? Canada is always looking to support Ukraine in whatever way possible. We have been a leader in military aid, donated over $1 billion worth of aid. And with the $2.4 billion of IMF loan that we committed in the last budget, we are now over $8 billion of aid committed overall to Ukraine. David, this speaks to Canada's commitment across the board, humanitarian, economic, military aid. And as we discuss the counteroffensive that is upcoming, we will continue to do whatever is possible to get this aid to Ukraine as soon as possible. And I want to mention the $60 million package that we announced today, 21,000 assault rifles as well as 2.4 million rounds of ammunition. David, that's the type of military support that we'll continue to put on the table. No, and, and that's where I wanted to go next because that is, uh, th those are new details, but this was money that was previously announced as part of earlier packages. And when I looked through the budget this year, there was no line item for defense spending for Ukraine. So, so what is the plan for that going forward if it's, if it's not there in a transparent way in the federal budget, Minister? 
Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, we are continuing to purchase whatever aid we can to donate to Ukraine with existing funds. At the same time, we are undertaking the defense policy update, and that will provide greater clarity in terms of the needs for the Canadian Armed Forces. And we will also, at the same time, work across government to put in place whatever additional aid we can for Ukraine. Uh, is the existing envelope, is, is that it in terms of the military spending or can we expect you to increase that if the need increases with it? At this point, David, what I can say is that our commitment to Ukraine is solid in both the short and the long term. Prime Minister Trudeau said today that we will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine. And that means that we will do whatever we can to support them as they fight for their own sovereignty and democracy, but as well the rules-based international order that has kept us all safe since the end of the Second World War. Okay, so just a final question on this. Just because there isn't a line item in the budget for future defense spending, we shouldn't assume there will be no future defense spending. You will add that as needed. Is, am I correct in that understanding? It is possible to add that spending at another time. Okay. Uh, I, I wonder if we can just look ahead to the NATO summit coming up in, in July, Minister, because Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that he expects NATO allies to agree at that summit to a more ambitious defense spending pledge, one that would make it clear that 2% of GDP is the floor, not a ceiling. I know you've mentioned the defense policy review, but will your government agree to that when NATO meets uh, later this year? Well, our relationship with NATO, as you know, is strong. We are a founding member of NATO. For example, uh, we have the sixth largest defense budget of NATO countries, and we lead the Enhanced Forward Presence Battle Group on NATO's eastern flank. This all speaks to a very strong relationship and committed relationship between Canada and NATO. As we continue to build in terms of defense spending, we are seeing in Canada an upward trajectory, whether it is the $8 billion in budget 2022 or the almost $40 billion committed to NORAD modernization and continental defense, our government is committed to increasing defense spending as we have shown. And we will continue to do what we need to in order to uphold our multilateral alliances, whether it's NORAD, whether it is NATO, whether it is Five Eyes, because the safety and protection of Canadians and our obligations, uh, generally speaking, internationally, are of the utmost importance, especially in this time of the global strategic environment. But you know, Minister, it was just last week that France's ambassador to this country characterized Canada's defense effort as weak, uh, in his words. France spends 1.9% of GDP on defense. It's planning to increase above that. I, I just wonder how you respond to that sort of criticism from an ally, and I, I wonder why France can move faster than Canada can move on this. I appreciate the question without doubt. And as I mentioned, we are undertaking the defense policy update. And we can't simply take money and throw it at the source without making sure that we do so in a prudent and cautious way. And the way we are doing that is methodical. It's systematic. We're undertaking a defense policy review. We are hearing from stakeholders now, and we will take all of that into account in formulating where the defense and security needs are for this country, and then come forward with a plan for additional spending. So, Minister, if I could, I'd like to just end the, end the interview where I started it. Uh, on the air, uh, there was talk today at, at the press conference with the Ukrainian Prime Minister about the spring counteroffensive, the attempt to reclaim territory. It's tough to do that if you can't control the skies and you don't have air defense. So, are, are you confident that the NASAM system that you've promised Ukraine will be there in time for the spring counteroffensive to, to cover for any ammunition shortfalls or deficiencies they may uncover in their existing systems? We have seen Ukraine win territory back in the north and the east and the south. And our commitment to Ukraine is to continue to supply it with whatever we can, 
whether it is military, economic, or humanitarian aid, in order to bolster its counteroffensive and its fight for its own territory. So regardless of the type of equipment that we are talking about, Canada works to get it there as soon as possible. And I have cited some examples, but again, Prime Minister Schmeichel thanked Canada profusely this morning for our continued support and our expeditionary uh, effort in getting aid to Ukraine as soon as possible. Okay, Minister Anita Anand, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Take care.